the director has a big job. And his work is especially difficult when you think that his star actor is a bird brain named Woody Woodpecker. I don't know much else to say about Woody Woodpecker other than that he's got that iconic laugh. <laughs> And a really cool roller coaster at Universal Studios. I know it's intended to be a kiddie ride. It's one of those rides that doesn't really give you a traditional harness. So it's actually kind of unconventional in the way you ride. You feel all the twists and turns and uh, yeah, a laugh and a roller coaster. Not much else to say. And it's a shame to think that this is how a Golden Age character with the popularity of Mickey Mouse and the Looney Tunes would go. Woody Woodpecker was a household name, but seemed to have died out over the years. I wouldn't say he's become obscure like Screwball Squirrel, but isn't as recognized as Bugs Bunny. Part of that may have to do with Universal Studios being inconsistent over the years with the animation they have, which seemed more interested in following what's popular rather than invest in a similar style. Why revisit a character as old as Mickey Mouse when you could be selling more Minion toys? Another reason is the character. Despite his popularity, Woody Woodpecker cartoons were nothing really special other than taking qualities from Looney Tunes. You can even argue that Woody was Universal's answer to Bugs Bunny since his co-creator also gets credit for creating Bugs Bunny. Even Mel Blanc has voiced the character at one point and still gets credit for voicing the character when he laughs. So with the lack of direction Woody Woodpecker has been given over the years, it's no surprise that that lack of direction would transition into his first feature film. Instead of getting a wide release last year, it was given a limited theatrical run in Brazil, and then immediately streamed online and sold on DVD. So what was this intended to be? A feature film for theaters, or a made-for-video movie? Is it a slapstick cat-and-mouse chase film, or a scrapped episode of Degrassi? Is Woody supposed to be a light-hearted cartoon character who wants to learn more about the importance of family, or a mastermind sociopath with murderous tendencies? All these questions are not going to be answered, but let's check it out anyways. <laughs> Just look at this trailer. What is this supposed to be? You'd think that this were a joke movie like the ones you'd find in Tropic Thunder. But who knows? Not all live-action cartoon movies stink. There have been plenty of good live-action adaptations made by fans of the material who try to capture the spirit and tone of the original. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be painful. Our movie opens with hunters chasing after Woody, as he does his usual cartoon shenanigans. For the most part, the animation isn't too distracting, except for the glassy eyes. I wouldn't be so disturbed if they weren't huge glassy saucers staring into my soul. The artificial lighting that hits the eyes not only makes it look fake, but offsets the wacky cartoony movements. And as I said before, it's not terrible. We do see traditional wacky shenanigans he's known for like breaking the fourth wall, slowing down time for the sake of a gag, and exploiting the hell out of that laugh. <laughs> if you thought hearing this laugh too many times would get distracting, don't worry. He also spends most of the screen time telling the audience that he loves peanut butter like he were George Washington Carver at a peanut butter convention. Peanut butter. Oh yeah, peanut butter. I'm a sucker for peanut butter! I love peanut butter. Peanut butter! Peanut butter! I don't really remember that from the cartoons. Then again, all I remember from the cartoons is that he's got a roller coaster. So maybe I'm not the best judge of character as far as the legitimacy of Woody Woodpecker. What I can judge the film by is its story, and it gets pretty lazy. We got the workaholic businessman who looks like the world's most interesting man if he had acting lessons from Matthew Broderick. He wants to buy Lakeside property and flip it for affordable housing. So when did this story start ripping off Norma the North? If that didn't sound like a movie ripping off a story of other films, guess what? He's also a deadbeat dad who has to take care of his son while his ex-wife goes away. All of this is dumped on us, and we're expected to believe he's our hero. So yeah, did you think Woody Woodpecker was going to be the star of the Woody Woodpecker film? Think again. It's about the father getting to bond with his son while also learning the importance of family while having to deal with Woody Woodpecker. So that technically means Woody Woodpecker isn't even the main attraction in the movie. 
So how are we supposed to like the character when all of his character traits are copied and pasted from other movies? By giving a silly yet not too over the top performance while also having a name that's a play on the co-creator of Woody Woodpecker, Walter Lance? I can't do it, I'm sorry. I would like to help you, but I can't. And that's final. My hands were tied, you saw that. Yeah, I know, but- Oh, did you see that? You saw that, right? He said he wasn't gonna do that thing. But then in the next scene, he ends up doing that thing. The thing that shows up in like really bad movies and it's like overly used in really bad films. Like, who would have guessed? It's not like this review where I say I don't want to keep doing it. I'm still going to do it. When the businessman's son meets Woody for the first time, we discover that they both hit it off after he gives him food and names him Woody. I know what you're thinking. Why would a teenage boy want to call his potential pet his Woody? Clearly, you haven't seen Toy Story. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, Woody cannot be understood by humans who I guess assume that the cartoon character with big white gloves that floats in the air like a zoo is an actual animal rooted in reality. Because if he did talk, that would be stupid. Idiot. Now the father has to deal with his son's new friend even as he goes out of his way to make his life a living hell. And I don't mean that jokingly, Woody Woodpecker does some pretty insane things that go beyond traditional slapstick. He borders on sociopathic tendencies. He electrocutes people, fills their cars with cement while people are still in the car, and even blows up the RV the family's staying in. Come on, you know you want me to push it. No, Woody, we don't want you to do that. Go back to making good roller coasters. I'm sorry, I've been talking about this roller coaster nonstop, but it's a really good ride. Whenever you go to Universal, just go check it out. When Woody Woodpecker isn't attempting manslaughter, he's also making burp and fart jokes as a way to humor the audience into thinking this is actual humor. Don't worry, if you got a kid who hasn't seen a burp and fart joke, this is the movie for them. Anyone else smell gas? <laughs> and it's not me this time! How's that for an eviction notice? They make so many toilet jokes, you may as well have characters eating poop. No. No, no, not really. I was a joke. I wasn't being serious. Come oh, on, I was expecting more from the director of Chairman of the Board starring Carrot. Okay, I, I didn't actually mean that. There is no hope. So I'm crazy, what, what, what can I do? If you had to be attached to this character, I Feel Your Pain is a decades old song is made hip with a gangster rap beat. Don't forget to go on iTunes to check out his latest track, Getting Down with the Birches and Woods. The owner makes his contrived turnaround when he starts to befriend Woody by paying him in food, leading to a scene where you'd swear the filmmakers were talking to the audience about the making of this film. Okay, okay, I know what you folks are thinking. Woody is a big, fat sellout. Yeah, taking an iconic cartoon character and having him half the time go on killing sprees and then the other half making burp and fart jokes doesn't justify anything. Through a misunderstanding where Woody burns the now developed home after making the creepiest portrait of the family I could ever imagine, he's captured by the poachers from earlier and sold on a black market auction. At this point, somehow Woody forgets he's a cartoon character that can freeze time and break physics through cartoon logic and manages to stay captured. Of all the times the film could have pulled off the cartoon gags, this is a missed opportunity. I guess I wouldn't be so disappointed, but the scene never ends. It goes through all the expected beats we've come to expect from these crappy movies, which is all I could say for this dumpster fire of a film. It's hard enough to imagine Woody Woodpecker used in a story like this about friendship and family. Is this really the appropriate story you can give for the coked up cousin of Daffy Duck? His theme song literally tells you he's a nut. So don't you think a better character like Paddington or Winnie the Pooh would have been complimented with a story like this? On the grand scheme, it's not the worst cartoon live action adaptation I've seen. I'll go out of my way and say that Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas was more painful to sit through. It is cool to see Woody Woodpecker do silly gags when it isn't involving potential murder. However, it's so disjointed and lazily put together with the cheapness of a Disney Channel original movie, I can't see myself wanting to see this unless I were drunk and needed something to riff on. The movie makes it very easy to take shots at, and the character like Woody Woodpecker deserves better than this. It's a bad movie that makes me think a legacy of animators like Walter Lance gets stuck with stuff like this. Woody Woodpecker? More like Woody would I forget about it. So my question for today, if you were to bring back Woody Woodpecker in any form of media as like a good comeback,
how would you do it? Comment below and let me know. I'm Joey Tedesco, and thanks for watching this review on the Cartoon Palooza.